ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man. We started getting some visitors. From every universe. Hello, Peter. You're not Peter Parker. I'm sorry, what was your name again? Dr. Otto Octavius. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, seriously, what's your actual name? There are others out there. We need to send them back. So, Scooby-Doo this crap. You know, all this is kind of your mess. I know a couple of magic words myself, starting with the word please. Please, Scooby-Doo this crap. You're flying out into the darkness to fight ghosts. What do you mean? They all die fighting Spider-Man. It's their fate. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah, me too. Don't. Look, there has to be another way. There isn't. They're a danger to our universe. You're not gonna take this away from me. Peter. You're struggling. Damn it. You want while the world tries to make you choose. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. Welcome back, everyone. Happy Spider-Man week. Marvel and Sony dropped the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer with a whole bunch of Easter eggs in the full roster of Sinister Six villains. So we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get everything. We're doing a giveaway for IMAX tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just leave your favorite Easter egg from this new trailer on the video. The big thing with this new trailer is everyone was wondering how much more they would show us in terms of the characters because there have been all the rumors about Daredevil, Matt Murdock leaks, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield leaks from the past week. But here's the thing, there's actually a scene later in the trailer where the lizard seems like he gets punched in the middle of the air but there's nothing around him. I think there's another version of Spider-Man here, like maybe Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man, and they just edited the trailer to be kind of misleading the way that Marvel does that sometimes. But we did get our confirmed five Sinister Six villains. Really, it's a Sinister Five because it's just Alfred Molina's Dr. Octopus, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and Thomas Hayden Church's Sandman, all from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. Then Jamie Foxx's Electro and Reese Ifon's Lizard from the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movies, with all of them getting slight redesigns like costume tunings, but made to look as close as possible to their original versions of their characters from those movies. Because even though Green Goblin's costume looks a little bit different, a little bit shinier, it's the same deal with Dr. Octopus's costume. His octopus arms look the exact same. Although, now confirmed that he does get a giant Iron Man upgrade during the events of the film. But since this is just going to be my quick reaction video, we'll just go through shot by shot talking about the really big WTF moments and Easter eggs. So when he's all beaten up, bloody, standing in the rain, talking about the one week of his life that he got to enjoy actually being Spider-Man, he's talking about the week that overlaps with the end of Spider-Man Far From Home and the beginning of Spider-Man No Way Home. But it sounds like they perform Doctor Strange's spell and things go off the rails about a week after that happened, after she learned his identity. He also mentions the spider bite. I don't know if we're ever going to see that. They just announced that Spider-Man freshman year TV show that they're going to do on Disney Plus for his character during his freshman year at Midtown High. So maybe we'll see the spider bite during that. 
we get another scene with Spider-Man versus a subway train, which just reminds you every single time of Tobey Maguire and the Dr. Octopus fight during Spider-Man 2, because Dr. Octopus also a big character during this. And we have the other multiverse scene of Doctor Strange with the many different trains just warping around them. A lot of the scenes during the trailer are meant to be references to scenes from those original Amazing Spider-Man movies and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. Like the major Gwen Stacy moment at the end of the trailer where he's trying to save MJ. You can't save everybody, Spider-Man. This is all my fault. I can't save everyone. There's a new version of the scene with Doctor Strange's spell where they confirm what actually happened to make things go wrong. They do confirm the meme, local man ruins everything. Doctor Strange was blending together elements to make everyone forget, but something Spider-Man did while this was happening caused it to go awry, and that's how the Sinister Six villains get brought to the main MCU universe. Rewatching this footage of when he's giving Spider-Man the business, Doctor Strange sounds so pissed off at him. We get a longer version of the bridge scene with updated special effects, confirm Green Goblin and his glider here with Dr. Octopus. So he's fighting multiple Sinister Six villains in a lot of his different fights across the movie. The glider, the costume is meant to be the exact same from the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie. The reason why it just looks a little bit different is because modern special effects are just so much better, but it is meant to be the same suit and it is meant to be Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin from the moment before he died. Like they kind of explained later in the trailer, they die because of fights that they have with Spider-Man. The difference though is that Doctor Strange makes it sound like they have people coming from every single universe. But we only see Sinister Six villains from like two different universes here, and three if you count Venom because of the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene. So I'll address this in a second when we get to that part of the trailer, but later in all those Statue of Liberty scenes where it's holding the giant Captain America shield and you see the sky just tearing all around them, it sounds like that's sort of a lead in to Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness, like reality starts to crumble around them and it gets really, really bad. We get our first Electro scene, you see what Spider-Man's costume looks like when he turns it inside out. They've kind of confirmed this with some of the merchandise too. The black suit is really just the red advanced suit. The Steve Ditko red and black suit from Spider-Man Far From Home just turned inside out. We get a much longer version of the Dr. Octopus fight on the George Washington Bridge with him just throwing all this stuff at him with his octopus arms. Then the way this scene plays out with him being confused about Tom Holland's Spider-Man, it sounds like he believes when he first sees Spider-Man in the Iron Spider costume, he thinks that it's Tobey Maguire's version of Peter Parker. Like, oh, hello, Peter Parker. And then once he's able to get his octopus arms around him and immobilize him, it seems like what's happening here is that he uses his octopus arms to steal his Iron Spider nanites. Like there's some functionality inside the arms because they're sent that allows them to hack his Iron Spider suit and take the nanites. And that's why you see his octopus arms changing to the Iron Man colors, like the traditional red gold colors. There's a really big Amazing Spider-Man comic book Easter egg on this license plate. They did that during Spider-Man Far From Home and even during Spider-Man Homecoming. All the license plates wound up being big Easter eggs for Spider-Man comics. Then they have their whole Scooby-Doo thing going on in the trailer. Doctor Strange literally calls them the Scooby Gang when he tells them to clean up the mess that Spider-Man created. Somehow he's able to trap Dr. Octopus in one of Dr. Strange's prisons in this underground lair. And it sounds like this happens before he captures the other Sinister Six villains. And Dr. Octopus sort of tells him about what's going on with these multiverse versions of the characters. Like they laugh about his name. Like your name is Dr. Octopus, really? Which reminds you of J. Jonah Jameson giving the character his name during Spider-Man 2. Guy named Otto Octavius winds up with eight limbs. What are the odds? What are we gonna call this guy? Uh, uh, Dr. Octopus. That's crap. Uh, uh, science squid? Crap. Doctor Strange. That's pretty good. But it's taken. He was the person who started calling him Doctor Octopus within that universe. But when he says you're going to capture ghosts, he's basically talking about how they all died during fights with other versions of Spider-Man. And that sort of sets off the whole Spider-Man versus Doctor Strange plot in the movie, where Spider-Man is trying to find a way to fix things without having to kill these other Sinister Six villains by sending them back, because he'd basically be sending them back to their deaths. There's even a scene with Jamie Foxx's Electro saying, you're not taking this away from me. Like, he knows that he'll die if he goes back. There has to be another way. There isn't. They're a danger to our universe. You're not gonna take this away from me. Obviously, all the Statue of Liberty scenes implied that this is going to be probably from the big climax of the movie, like one of the big final fights. But I believe the reason why it has Captain America's shield is because they're celebrating Falcon becoming Captain America. It's also a funny callback to Captain America Civil War, where Spider-Man actually used or stole Captain America's shield. It's just that this time, it's a massive, massive version of the shield. 
We get some clues about how he captures some of these Sinister Six villains, Doctor Strange's spells, and how they work with his costume. So it sounds like he modifies some of his gauntlets here to allow him to wield magic, and the spell is basically meant to trap them in those special prisons. Like, when he uses it, it will send them to Doctor Strange's prisons. We also get some clues about the different look for Electro's character. Like, he looks kind of blue in the background here, but he's got yellowish lightning, so it probably has something to do with him just absorbing different kinds of energy, and that being the reason why later in the movie he gives off different colored lightning, just making him a little bit more comic book accurate. We get a longer version of this Daily Bugle scene revealing that J. Jonah Jameson is actually on the ground, so it's not just a video of him in the movie. He's literally in the movie this time. Then I love this whole Spider-Man versus Doctor Strange sequence. So this is sort of like a reverse version of the Avengers Infinity War portal scene where you have Spider-Man jumping in and out of his portals fighting Thanos, except this time it's Doctor Strange using his portals to try and trap Spider-Man and keep him from getting away. He also uses the same spell against Spider-Man that he used against Thanos to pull him in, to like reel him in kind of like a fish. And he pulls the same trick on Spider-Man that the Ancient One used on him and used on the Hulk during Avengers Endgame. Then they've been teasing that they're going to have one of the biggest action scenes in the history of Marvel movies so far, and it sounds like it's basically Spider-Man. Maybe Tobey Maguire, maybe Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man gave him some assistance during this, but they don't show up during the trailer. But it's basically Spider-Man versus all five of the Sinister Six characters at the same time. And also now confirming that it is Reese Ifon's version of the Lizard. And the suit that he's wearing when he's fighting them in the Statue of Liberty fight is called the Integrated Suit. It's sort of like an upgraded version of the Iron Spider suit. Then they have their big Gwen Stacy scene with Spider-Man trying to save MJ Gwen Stacy style. Like it's a big callback to Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man 2 where he was not able to save Gwen Stacy, which is why Tom Holland's Spider-Man in the trailer is saying, I can't save everyone. Making you think they might kill MJ during the movie, but I don't think it'll wind up going down the same way. I think they'll find a way to save her with a big twist. Early theory, if Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man were going to help him in some way, it would probably be to help him save MJ. Like, picture all these big fight scenes around the Statue of Liberty in this giant, giant version of Captain America's shield with another version or two, maybe, of Spider-Man from the multiverse. Like I said, that could be Andrew Garfield's amazing Spider-Man here who's supposed to be punching the lizard. Like, when it seems like he's getting punched by absolutely nothing. Just a really misleading trailer edit to make us believe that he's not in the movie. In the tag scene they end on, when Doctor Strange says, they're coming through and I can't stop them, he's probably just talking about way, way worse things coming through from the multiverse. And I think that will be a sort of a lead-in for Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness, where things get even crazier with Scarlet Witch. But if you spotted any huge Easter eggs in the trailer I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments, and I'll do a longer video for this with more Easter eggs tomorrow. You can click here for that video, I'll update the link as soon as I post that, and click here for my Marvel Moon Knight trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.